Hey guys, good morning. I hope the sun is shining where you are and that you're able to get out into the garden today. It's been raining a lot here in Pennsylvania, so I kind of had to halt all my planting until the rain stopped and things dried out a bit, but I think we're okay to get planting again today. So I want to get in the remainder of my hardy annuals. I also want to direct sow some poppies and I've had a lot of private messages about poppies. So I wanted to just show you how I do it. And also I need to build some sweet pea trellises. And I pulled out the bamboo that I've been using for probably the last three years that I just got for free on Craigslist. And it's just too warped and worn out at this point. I feel like I can't really trust it as far as a strong support system goes. So I'm gonna go down to Roars. I'm gonna take you guys with me and we'll pick up some new bamboo stakes there. And then hopefully we'll be able to get all that done before it's time to pick up my daughter from school. And hopefully it'll just be an enjoyable time and maybe, you know, get you motivated to get out into the garden. But I imagine you don't need any motivation, especially if the sun is shining where you guys are. It's just a wonderful feeling, isn't it? And we'll probably see my husband around today too, because we're finishing up pruning some more of our apple trees. We're late on that, but that's just the way life goes sometimes, right? So let's take Grace with us and we'll head down to Roars. Gracie, you want to come? Want to go for a drive? You wanna go roars? Okay, let's go. Oh, she's so excited. She can't wait to go to roars. We love roars. Okay, let's go. What are you guys doing? <laughs> All right, here we are. The best store in the world. Now you can see why I have to leave my wallet in the car when I come here. I do not allow myself to bring a credit card inside this building. I don't think I bought a new shirt in about 15 years, but in here I can spend more money than I care to mention. All right, so a little bit of a problem in there. He said they're actually not able to get the bamboo in this year for some reason. He recommended that we head over to Ken's Gardens. Over here at Ken's. And these pansies look so beautiful. I love the blue. I could just buy them all right now. Oh dear. It's gonna be hard to stay on track. Oh, here's a precious stepping stone. I should probably find a place for that. I love these resurrection gardens. Have you guys ever made one of these? It looks like you just put grass seed on a mound. This would be a really great idea, especially if you had younger kids. Oh boy, look at these beautiful primrose. Maybe I'll pick one of these up for my mom. I know she really likes primrose. Here's some Iceland poppies. I'm gonna show you mine when we get back home. But theirs are already blooming. Wow. Mine are still a little bit short. But yeah, these look like champagne bubbles. All right, back on track. Here is the bamboo. I was thinking at first I would get six feet, but I think I better go for the eight. Well guys, Ken's really saved me today. Thank goodness they had these bamboo stakes. I ended up getting the eight foot poles because I wanna sink these into the ground about a foot. Um, you know what's really funny? If you do like a triangle TP with these, they are really, really strong. I've done these both here and at work with just absolutely ginormous ones. And I was amazed at the type of torrential weather that they could take. So I'll show you how I make these. But first I wanna sow some poppies with you because I think that's the question I'm getting the most. So when we're talking about poppies, it's really important not to lump all poppies together because there is one family in particular that needs to be treated differently than all the rest. And that's the Iceland poppy. And I'll show you those after we're done sitting here. But the Iceland poppy, at least in my zone, needs to be sown inside in late summer plant it out in fall. You need to overwinter it as a baby plant so that it can kind of develop in the cooler parts of the season. And it's actually budded up for me right now. And we actually saw some of Ken's gardens in flower. Mine aren't in flower yet. So if you missed out on that, not to worry at all. There's still three other families of poppies that you can sow right now 
four to six weeks before the last frost and you can just direct sow them. So a family that I really like is called the Shirley family. An example of that would be this amazing gray Shirley poppy. It's been very popular the last few years and so I sowed this in the driveway garden last night. Shirley poppy has a vase life of about three to four days, um, so just keep that in mind. It's still not a long lasting cut flower, but it is an okay cut flower in terms of being a poppy. Next up, you have one, you have the bread seed family. That's a poppy that looks like this. This one's called lilac pom pom. I have some other here, some others here. Frosted salmon poppy is also bread seed, and another one I'm trying called black swan. This is a great poppy to just stay out in the garden. You're not going to get a good vase life out of these guys. You might get one to two days if you're lucky, but honestly, you might as well keep it out there in the garden and enjoy it. And then if you want, once all the petals fall away, you can use the poppy pod, both as a fresh pod or a dried pod in arrangements. And then the fourth family is the California poppy. I don't really grow that one anymore. It's just not personally appealing to me, but it's a really common poppy. You see it a lot of times. Um, sometimes it's even called a ditch poppy. They're often come in red and orange. I'll put a picture up on the screen, but same thing with those. Not really a great cut flower in terms of how long it lasts in the vase, but very easy to sow in the garden. So let me now show you how to sow some of these. We'll sew some lilac pom-pom together in an area. And let me also show you my Iceland poppies and what they look like now here in mid to late March. So here we have a section of Iceland poppies. You can see they're budded up now. They're going to stretch much taller than this before they start to bloom. And their ends do need seared once they do start to bloom. And once that's time, I'll go ahead and show you those in a video. But these were overwintered as baby plants and now they're getting ready to bloom for me. So that's your Iceland poppy. Now let's head over down into that area in the garden and we will sow some bread seed poppies. I think I wanna put the lilac pom pom poppies over there. So once again, all we have to do is work the soil a little bit. And if your soil was not compacted at all and it didn't have any mulch there or anything, you wouldn't even have to bother working it much. You might just wanna rake the top a bit but really you can just scatter these seeds on the top. I scatter very heavily and then just then later because I want a nice stand of poppies. And then we're just gonna water them in and we'll just make sure the seed bed stays evenly moist until they germinate. So let's get started on that. All right, guys, we've got the poppies all sown. I'll probably sow some more later on today, but I wanna move on to the sweet pea trellises. It's really easy to do those. And how I go about sowing sweet peas is I just soak the seed in lukewarm water for one hour. That seems to do the trick for me. And then I plant them into 36 cell trays. That's a bigger cell than the normal 48 that I work with for other annuals and they seem happy as can be in that. I try to pinch out the centers always. Sometimes I forget to do it. This year, guess what? I forgot to do it, so I just did it the other night, even though they got really lanky on me. But I think it'll be all right at the end of the day. So let's enjoy some more sunshine and some more hard work and planting. Right, Grace? Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Well guys, I feel like this day is just going awesome. I'm getting so much done. Now I'm gonna go over to my raised bed area. I'm gonna put in some hardy annuals and then I'm just gonna keep on working and keep the camera rolling. Look at this awesome root system on these. I don't know. This just makes me really excited. I just feel like there's nothing like growing things from seed yourself. But you can see I'm not bothering to use a measuring tape on this. I know that in my four foot beds, if I want to place plants by nine by nine inches, I just do five rows. So I just kind of eyeball it at this point. So now I'm working on some scabiosa that I started from seed. Uh, this scabiosa is called grandmother's pincushion flower and what I like to do is if I'm growing multiple crops in a row or in a raised bed or whatever kind of planting situation you find yourself in it's a good idea to plant things next to each other that have the same spacing so the snaps are going in at 9x9 nine nine, the scabiosa is going in at 9x9 nine nine, and that just saves you a big headache when it comes to netting rather doing something nine by nine and then following it with say like Orlea that I would put in at 12 by 12. It's nice to kind of have that uniformity when you go to put on netting. And I didn't get great germination on this scabiosa, which was kind of surprising. I'm not sure why, so I don't think we'll have any leftover plants. I noticed some questions in the hardy annual video that I did last week about hardening off. And yes, all these guys were hardened off for at least two weeks. Just get them a little bit colder. A little more sun, a little more wind every day. Start out gradually and just work your way towards getting them, in this case, cooler since they're cool season annuals. And you know, a little more sun, a little more wind. Toughen those babies up. See, some of these don't even look that great. I'm not even sure why. But we'll see what happens. I think they'll probably catch up and be fine. Well guys, I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here. It's about time for me to head over to school and I better get some cleaner clothes on before I do that. But I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in the garden and I hope it was enjoyable to watch this video. I'm never really sure when I do kind of a vlog if it's gonna be helpful to anybody. So, you know, would you mind letting me know is seeing this type of thing helpful or is it better that I kind of just stick with how to grow this and how to harvest that? Cause um like I think I try to say before, I just always want to be helpful and be encouraging and of showing you what's going on around here on more of a daily or every other day basis is helpful to anybody. I am more than happy to do that. You know, the lighting won't always be perfect. Um, I certainly won't always put on makeup for that kind of a thing. Um, this is a real life, what I really do on an everyday basis. But as I say, I want to bring, I want to be helpful and I want to bring joy. So let me know how I can do that for you. So look at Greg, can you see Grace here? Look, hold on. Grace, you wanna say bye to everybody? Say happy gardening. Bye. <laughs> bye guys. <laughs>